I'm going to show you how to make digital lesson plans in Google Sheets like the ones shown here. To start, you're going to open up a new sheet in Google Sheets, and across the top, we're going to include the dates that these lesson plans are for. Now I'm going to select the cells A through G in row 1, and when I highlight them, I'm then going to click on this Merge Cells button. When you click on the drop-down, there's options on Merge All, vertically or horizontally, depending on what you're doing. Because I only have one row, I can just click on the Merge button. From there, I'm going to type in Lesson Plans for, and I include the week that I'm saying these lessons are for. We're going to fix some of the formatting as we go, but this is our template to start. Then I want to include my days of the week, so I'm going to start in B2, and write Monday, Tuesday, and so forth. I'm also going to include a weekly summary at the end because it helps me visually kind of keep track of where I'm at. You'll see that as of right now, some of the columns aren't wide enough for the words. Don't worry, we're going to fix that as we go. On the left, I want my first column to include my content areas and other things such as resources, whether or not my copies have been made, and the slides that I'll be including with it. So I'm going to start with reading as my content area. Down in the next row, I'll type in the resources that I'm going to use, and later I'll be able to link those. I'll include checkboxes to see if I've already made those copies, and then slides to link the Google Slides to my lessons. Before I go further, I want to fix some of the formatting of my lesson so it, or for my lesson plan so it looks a little bit more like what you see on here. To do that, I'm going to go through and center a lot of what's on here. You can do that by selecting individual cells, or you can click in this top left to select the whole sheet that you have. I'm going to center them and align them to the middle so that all of my text is consistent within this. Naturally, your default font is set in Google and within your Google Suite, but you can change that as a default, or you can go through and change an individual. I like to switch to Didact Gothic because it's clean, easy to read, and the letters are formed correctly. Now, I'm not going to be able to fit my whole lesson plans in these small cells. Rather than using multiple cells to type it in, I'm going to change the spacing of it so that I have plenty of room and can change it as I need to, depending on what my lessons look like. I'm going to select my Monday through Friday columns, and when I right-click on those, I can click Resize Column, and I can change it to whatever width I want, and that when I do it this way, instead of clicking and dragging, then I have consistency within all of my cells rather than trying to make them look similar by just clicking and dragging. So now I have enough width for it all, but this is clearly not enough to type in a full reading lesson plan. I can click between this three and the four here to make it bigger, depending on what my needs are, make it smaller, and I can continue to adjust these columns to best fit what I'm doing. Now my reading block tends to have phonics, vocabulary, and comprehension. So I'm going to include that within my Monday template, and I'm going to copy paste it over to my other ones. My personal preference is that I like to have these aligned to the left and back up to the top, how it normally defaults to, so I can change it back to that if I'd already changed it. I can copy, select Tuesday through Friday, and paste those in. Now from here you can assess if this is enough room for what you want to type in or not. Your, tech, your boxes will automatically resize to fit what you want in it. If they're not, when you highlight them, this text wrapping clip icon is going to be what you need. Here it says overflow will just be pushed over, but if you wrap the text, whatever you are typing, it will continue to make room and make the rows taller and taller for you. Now you can tell from this page that I clearly like some colorful lesson plans. So I can go through and modify that. I can select individual cells or select rows at a time based on what I need to go through and change the color scheme of what I have going on here.
if I don't like the way this looks on these colors, I can select the different cells and make them a different color, make them a different font size. I can make them bolder, make it bigger, whatever you need to make your plans work for you. From here, you may realize that you need to resize your cells to make it work. This is your time to do that. In my summary column, I like to fill this out so that it's easier for me to fill out a family newsletter each week where I'll just type in the quick phonics skill that we're working on, any vocabulary words that we have, and then the comprehension skill that we're working on for that week or that month, whatever the time frame is. In my resources area, I like to link any of the papers that I need to print um, that have been loaded as PDFs into my Google Drive or any Seesaw links so that in the future it's easier for me to find them. Or if I'm working on my lesson plans collaboratively with a teammate, we can both access the same resources. I can do that if I have a Seesaw activity that I want to include. I can go through and share the activity. I can get the teacher link. Now this isn't how I'm going to share it to students, but this is how I'm going to share it on my plan so I have it and my partner teacher has it. I'm going to type in a brief description. And then there's a couple different shortcuts to how I can include links. But I can do insert link, or as you can see, control K. And then I can paste that link in there so that within my plans, if I'm sharing it with a partner teacher, they have access to the same exact thing that I'm doing. If I'm including printables from my Google Drive, whether that's slides or a PDF, I can go through within my drive and get the link for it, change the share settings as needed, and then I can type in a brief description and control K or insert link the same way that I just did. I like to include a page number so that if I'm sharing with someone and they're making copies or I'm making copies, we're very specific on exactly what we're doing. I fill out the resources as needed. In the copies made area, I like to include check boxes so that if I'm sharing my plans with someone else or we're working collaboratively, that we both don't have to make copies separately. Or if I'm just doing this on my own, that I already am sure that I've copied it and don't make extra or don't show up to a lesson unprepared. So I can select the boxes that I want and I can do insert check boxes. And now this is a really easy way for me to click in and let my partner teacher know I've already made the copies or to remind myself for next week that I've already made this copy but still have another one that I need to do. Another quick tip is that if you've got a page of check boxes and you're looking to just uncheck or check them all quickly, you can click in the top corner and then hit the space bar and it will uncheck or check all of the check boxes that you have in your Google Slides or Google Sheets. I like to also include slides with all of my lessons to keep me on pace. You may have different slides for different days or different or one slide for the whole week, whatever works for you. If you are planning to do a full week, you can select the cells and then merge them. And then when you go through to link them, it shows that it's for the whole week. So maybe I'm going to put The, a brief summary of what I'm doing, link that slide, and now it's there for me in the future to just easily go back to or my partner teachers to easily access my slides. There are some weeks where I have more than one resource or more than one type of slide that I want to include. Maybe I have comprehension slides and phonics slides. In that case, I just add an additional row. So if I had more than one resource for that lesson that I wanted to be sure to include, I can click below it and click insert row above. And now I have another space for a visual part of it. I like to then merge these cells to show me that these two rows go with my resources. Then to make my next content area, I can do some copy pasting or I can start again. So I like to do is to create a break within this. So I select these cells, I merge them, and then I add just a plain row of another color to show that I'm making a new area. So now if I wanted, I could copy paste these over, but I'm not talking about reading anymore. So I personally, I'm gonna change the color and then change the first 
box to say math because I'm talking about math resources. I still will need copies and slides, so I'm going to leave those there. But I am going to make my math row bigger by clicking and dragging. Again, if I wanted consistency, I could select these two rows and resize those so that they're the same. I could make it whatever I needed to just by clicking and dragging. After I figure out the resources that I need for my math ones and re-click in my checkboxes, I could copy paste or I could just insert like that. I'm gonna again have to merge them. You can just color them in, but this is a nice way to distinguish between areas. I can select the whole thing, copy paste, maybe change out the colors and go to another content area like writing and then make it bigger for what I need. Working within Google Sheets is great because you can link things directly to your lessons, you can work collaboratively with, collaboratively with others, and you can customize it to exactly what you needed. If your district requires I can statements or standards included within it, it's really easy to just add a row, type in standards, and then add in whatever standard that your content aligns to directly within it. It's easy to share with admin as well as your team. And then to make another week or another month, depending on how you plan, all I do is right click on sheet. First off, I'm gonna rename it and I'm just gonna include the dates so they have an idea of when these are for. Then when I right click on it again, I can duplicate. Now I have a copy of it that can be renamed for the next week. And I can start and include whatever I need in this next week's plans with a new date as well. When you create a template and you just copy paste it, it's easy to change out the dates and what you need for each week and to be able to refer back to what you taught, super easy.